and in Paris, France, one man is about to unlock the mystery of Egypt's ancient language. Twenty-eight, Rue Mazarine, Paris. Jean-Francois Champollion has spent the morning hard at work in his attic study. He arrived in Paris a year and a half ago, miserable and broke. An ardent Republican, he has lost his university post in Grenoble and narrowly escaped trial for treason after supporting an anti-monarchist uprising. Leaving his wife behind, he has fled to Paris, where he has relentlessly pursued his obsession, the successful translation of the language of ancient Egypt. It is not a particularly novel quest. The hieroglyphics that adorn the pyramids and temples of Egypt have mystified the greatest minds of the age. Covered in a language of pictures no one can understand, Egypt's ruins are nothing more than piles of enigmatic stone. Even the most basic information about this ancient world is unknown, kept secret by a language no one can read. A language Jean-Francois Champollion is on the brink of deciphering. Napoleon has always believed that the picture writing of ancient Egypt could be read. Now he has made the breakthrough he has spent two decades of his life working on. not just proved his theory. He has found the key that will unlock the mysteries of ancient Egypt. There is only one person he can share his breakthrough with, his brother, the assistant to the secretary of the Institute of France. Jean-Jacques Champollion is just finishing off his morning's work in preparation for lunch. His office is just round the corner from Rue Mazarine. Champollion covers the 403 meters in just under a minute.
The object that inspired Champollion to start his quest was made two millennia before he was even born. The Rosetta Stone. A monumental tablet carved in the Egyptian city of Memphis, 196 years BC. The text on the stone was carved in three scripts. The top section is in hieroglyphics, the language of pictures and symbols found on the ruins of ancient Egypt. The middle section was carved in hieratic, a joined up written language from the same period. while the lower section of the tablet was written in Greek. The language of Egypt's rulers, 196 BC. Within a few hundred years of its creation, knowledge of the two Egyptian languages and the civilization that used them will have vanished. Currently unconscious on the floor of his brother's office, Jean-Francois Champollion was just eight years old when the Rosetta Stone dramatically came to light. In 1798, a group of French soldiers unearth a mysterious stone monolith near the Egyptian town of Rosetta Napoleon Bonaparte's invasion of Egypt is in full swing. With his army come 151 scholars and scientists. Their mission, to claim the cradle of civilization for France. The black basalt tablet is clearly an object of significance. It is 114 centimeters high, 72 centimeters wide, 27 centimeters thick, and weighs 720 kilos. But it is the writing on it that really interests them. The first two sections are indecipherable ancient Egyptian, but the lower section is obviously Greek. Translating it, they learn the stone tablet is an expression of homage to the ruler of Egypt, Ptolemy. But it is the final sentence that excites them. It orders that the decree be written in Greek and both of Egypt's ancient languages. If the two other sections are translations of the Greek text, then the stone found in Rosetta offers a prospect as simple as it is spectacular. Using the Greek, it should be possible to decipher the two ancient Egyptian texts. The soldiers dispatch the tablet to the French Institute in Cairo. It will soon become apparent that finding the stone was the easy bit. <laughs>